Hello Peachies, welcome back to Dear Peachy. Picture someone whom you think is attractive, and imagine her skin, face, body, and clothes. Chances are, what you picture is probably very different from this lady. She was considered beautiful 200 years ago. Our perception of beauty keeps changing over time. What we deem as beautiful and attractive is largely influenced by the media today. Before the rise of social media, we constructed our myopic view of what makes a person attractive by what we saw in magazines and movies. The role of traditional media evolved drastically with the proliferation of social media. Celebrities who were once glamorized and could only be admired from afar are now chronicling their lives on social media. So what makes someone beautiful? The truth is, even though beauty is defined largely by race, culture, and era, there are some characteristics about physical beauty that people across ages and cultures agree with. Since the beginning of time, it is the golden ratio of facial aesthetics. The golden ratio is a theory which is used extensively to underlie our perception of attractiveness. Or in other words, to explain what makes someone beautiful. The Italian Renaissance Paul Math, Leonardo da Vinci, used the golden ratio equation and realized that the closer a face or object gets to this number, the higher the level of its perceived beauty. In fact, Leonardo is thought to have used the golden ratio when painting the Mona Lisa. Studies of the most beautiful women in the world have shown that they have countless instances of this ratio in their faces. This proves symmetry to be a key factor in perceived attractiveness, especially in female faces. It is surprising to know that humans tend to perceive a face more aesthetically appealing when it features the golden ratio, because the human eye can process it faster, and that causes our brain to feel pleased. So in our video today, we're taking a thorough look at the golden ratio, and how we can apply this theory to level up our makeup game to enhance our visuals better. This video will be divided into several sections, so please refer to the timestamps for the following parts. Let us begin this video with the question, what is the golden ratio? The golden ratio is also referred to as the divine proportion. The beauty experts, such as cosmetic surgeons and makeup artists incorporate the golden ratio into their work, using it as a tool to explain to clients who are dissatisfied with their facial proportions and how they may be brought back into balance. It is the golden ruler that guides us to the design of our face. There are several measurements used to make this determination. First, the length and width of the face are measured. Take the length and divide by the width. A visually balanced face is approximately 1.6 times longer than its width. Values less than 1.6 means that you have a shorter face, whereas values more than 1.6 indicates that you have a longer face shape. Besides that, there are other measurements taken at different regions to understand your facial proportions. In Chinese, these measurements are usually called Sun Ting Wu Yan. Sun Ting here means the three segments of your face, or we also call it the horizontal third. The upper third is the area from your hairline to the base of your eyebrow. The middle third region starts from the base of the eyebrow to the bottom of your nose. Lastly, the lower third ranges from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. It is suggested that these three segments should be equidistant. The unequal distance of each of these segments can produce a tremendous effect to your overall look. On the other hand, Wu Yan literally means five eyes in Chinese. So why is it named as five eyes? Other than dividing the human face into three segments horizontally, it can also be divided into five regions vertically. Hence, these regions are named as the vertical fifths. Similar to the horizontal thirds, the distance for each segment in the vertical fifth should be equal, since the width of each vertical fifth should equal to that of an eye. This explains why it is named as the five eyes. It is fairly easy to check if your face is close to the golden ratio. All you need to do is to take a photo of yourself without any makeup on. Relax your face and keep your head straight. You can then upload your picture into any photo editing app. Add horizontal and vertical straight lines at each of these regions that we mentioned just now. With these steps, you can definitely get a clearer view of your facial proportions. Therefore, understanding the specific area that you will need to focus in makeup helps enhance your facial structure and improve your personal style. According to the scientists, the balance of the facial ratios and proportions can increase one's perceived attractiveness. But do you know how the imbalance of these ratios can affect your overall impression? Making a small twitch with makeup to these regions can totally influence your appearance, therefore offering us more styling possibilities. If you have been a loyal viewer of our channel, 
We bet that the term middle third ratio is no stranger to you. A shorter middle third ratio is related to younger looking appearance. This is because a shorter middle third carries the neotenous traits that retain the juvenile or childlike features well into adulthood. This characteristic is highly preferred by the current aesthetic ideal, especially in East Asian countries like China. However, some might not favor this characteristic because it can make one's features appear more crowded, causing the face to look wider instead. On the contrary, a longer middle third ratio adds the air of maturity and elegance to our overall charisma. Wider upper third ratio exudes the refreshing vibes, but sometimes it affects the appearance of our hairline too. Narrower upper third ratio gives out that down-to-earth and adorable air that makes one look cute. Coming to the lower third, a longer lower third makes one appear more mature, sexy, and smart. In contrast, people tend to look younger, cute, or innocent looking when the lower third ratio is shorter. In the vertical fifth, the region that affect our overall appearance the most is the distance between the eyes. Closer eye distance brings your features closer to each other, hence channeling the sense of maturity towards the overall impression. Alternatively, one can appear younger with wide set eyes. Nevertheless, wide eye distance causes our features to be placed further apart. It creates the visual impression of a wider face shape. With that being said, these standards stated in the golden ratio are not carved into stone. It served as a benchmark towards beauty in the historic days. But everyone is different. We are all born unique, and that makes us attractive. By understanding the golden ratio theory, it helps us to understand our features better. You are free to follow the theory to enhance your facial structure through bringing balance to your general appearance, or breaking the rules to highlight your unique features to create a distinctive style. Now you have known what the golden ratio is and how it affects your face. It is time for us to get to the part on how to adjust the ratios of the horizontal thirds and vertical fifths to accentuate your beauty. Sit tight and get a pen and notepad because we got a whole lot of tips to unpack. Let's begin with the horizontal thirds. A wider upper third ratio is often associated with features, such as bigger forehead and receding hairline. It generally attracts more visual attention to this region. Thus, not only does it disrupt the harmonious balance of our facial features, but also make us look tired and weary at the same time. To restore the balance, you can adjust your brow shape by filling a soft arch or darkening the upper rim of your brow frame. Besides that, Adding contour or hair shadow powder along your hairline helps shift your hairline lower too. By doing these steps, more dimensions are added to the upper third area. It reduces the blankness and diverts the focus to other parts of our face. Besides makeup, bangs are a great option to reduce the width of the upper third ratio. The famous IU baby bangs are right up your alley, if you want to show off your forehead a little. Whereas Lisa's straight across bang style suits you the best, if you want to shift the focus away from your upper third region. Conversely, order upper third ratio features these characteristics, like a narrower forehead and lower hairline, causing the other parts of the face to look longer and losing its balance. To achieve the balance, we do the opposite of what we mentioned just now. Try to stay away from any hairstyles that cover up your forehead. It is fine to keep bangs. The long face framing bangs is your best choice. For brows, avoid brow shape with high arch as the arch may further reduce the width of your forehead. Opt for straight or upward brow shape instead, and bring the brow front lower for a softer look. Trim the brow hairs at the upper rim of your brow to give more space to this area. Matte highlighter can be used to add at the center of the forehead. It highlights this region and creates the illusion of a firmer and plumper forehead. Next, it's the middle third ratio. Longer middle ratio channels the vibes of being sexy, cool, and mature. However, if you prefer your style to be adorable or more amiable instead, here are some tips to make your middle third ratio appear shorter. Pick brow shape with a softer arch, or just go with straight brows, and shape the brow front lower, because a higher brow arch can increase the length of your brows to the base of your nose, which can make your middle third region look longer visually. Shift the focus of your eye makeup towards the lower lid area. The eyeshadows are deepened at the lower lash line area. If you have watched our previous videos, this makeup style can be best explained by the inverted eyeshadow technique, emphasizing lower lashes and adding egg yo cell contour. Both can also help shift the eye level lower. Hence, this can create the visual illusion of a shorter middle third ratio. Apply blushers in the center of your cheeks. Adding colors can help balance out the emptiness in this region. Avoid applying contour in two parallel lines at the sides of your nose bridge. This can elongate the width of your middle third ratio. 
start your contour at the nose root, so it gives the illusion of a shorter nose. At the area between the base of your nose and the upper region of your philtrum, lightly add a stroke to mimic the natural shadow of your nose tip. Highlighter is only added at the nose root and the upper region of the nose tip. Take note that you only need to apply the highlighter at these two spots, and not the entire nose bridge. Fuller upper lips divert the attention to the lower third segment. Overliner smudge out the lip product a little at your upper lip to make your upper lip look poutier and more voluminous. Longer middle third ratio makes short face shape appear leaner. Not only that, longer middle third ratio helps tone down the cuteness of a baby face while leveling up your beauty to look more mature and alluring. To elongate the middle third ratio, brows with higher arch can visually pull up the level at your brows here. The brow front can be shifted up higher to position your brows higher. As opposed to what we have mentioned before, we will put more focus at the upper eyelid rather than the lower lid. Put less effort on your lower lashes, but more emphasis on your upper lashes. Curl them and apply extra coats of mascara to make them stay curled. Falses are a great option too. Deepens the shadow at your upper lid area. Extend the nose contour from the nose roots towards the nose tip. Apply your highlighter in a fine straight line, starting from the nose bridge to your nose tip. All these steps are able to extend the length of your nose visually. Apply blush in a C-shape from the top of the temple down to the cheekbone. Use more product along the cheekbone, then diffuse it up towards the temple, pushing it inwards and upwards. This technique avoids putting too much of color at the mid-face area, thereby elevating the blankness of the mid-face area to elongate its ratio. Here is another smart trick. Use matte highlighter to highlight the philtrum, which is the area between your lips and your nose. By illuminating the philtrum, the width between the base of your nose and upper lip appears longer. Moreover, short hairstyles go well with short face shapes too. These hairstyles enhance the face shape by adding volume on top of your head and lengthening your overall face shape. Face shapes like oblong or oval shaped faces have longer chin or in other words, longer lower third ratio. However, the current aesthetic might prefer shorter chin instead. If you would like to bring balance to enhance your overall facial proportion, we have compiled some tips here to make your chin look shorter. Contour in the right places gives depth to your chin. Contour at the tip of your chin and highlight at the center and horizontal direction to give the illusion of a shorter chin. You can make some tweaks to your lips as well, other than overlining the bottom lip to make it look bigger. Add contour just right below the bottom lip to fake that natural shading. This shading right here serves as a shadow that separates the chin and lip visually. In this way, your chin looks shorter. In contrast, Round and heart-shaped faces generally have smaller or shorter chins. To make the chin appear longer, we are going to contour in through the chin. Your brush will be placed on top of your chin and roll it down below the chin. Repeat the same on the other side. Then, apply matte highlighter at the center of your chin in a horizontal line. It brings the highest point of your chin forward, which visually lengthens the chin. It is advisable to fill in lip products by using the gradient lip technique. The Korean gradient lip look is a great way to reduce the volume of your lips. This is because applying an even coat of lip products can make lips look bigger. Bigger lips attract more attention. Hence the visual focus on the chin will be diminished. Not only that, a perfect full-on lips have higher color contrast compared to the chin, which can make a short chin look more obvious. Besides balancing the width between the base of the nose and your chin, there is another element that we should look into. It's the space between the upper lip and nose, which is called the philtrum. According to the ideal philtrum to chin ratio, the distance between the bottom of nose to the cupid bow of your lips should be half of the length between the lower lip and the chin. If the distance A is more than half of distance B, it means that you have longer philtrum length. Longer philtrum length is often related to aged or mature appearances. This is a pretty natural progress as we age. The thinning and lengthening of the soft tissues in our lips will cause it to lose its volume. Therefore, the philtrum length becomes longer visually. From styling perspectives, longer philtrum length also adds a cool and fierce aura to one's look. Shorter philtrum length gives out a warm, down-to-earth and adorable vibes instead. To shorten the philtrum's length, you can lightly add shadows to the area below your nostrils and columella. This creates faux shadows that lowers the level of the base of your nose. Imagine when a light is placed over your head. A pointy nose tip will cast its shadow on the area below its columella. So what we are trying to do here is to mimic this effect to shorten the philtrum's length. Other than working on the nose, lips are important too. By using the contour product, 
lightly trace the outline of the groove right above your cupid's bow to fake that pouty lip look. Then, add contour to the center of the philtrum. Use any blushes in low saturation shades. Buff it along the outer rim of your upper lip to volumize your lips. With these steps, it surely helps to build a cute, young-looking impression for your style. However, excessively short filter length can cause your facial features to look too close to each other. To create the harmonious balance, there are some tips you can do to elongate the length of your filter. You can add matte highlighter to the ridge, which is at the sides of your filter, and apply contour to the center of the filter to exaggerate or emphasize the depth of the grooves at the midline. Try not to fill in with a full, even coat of lip products on the upper lips. Highlight the cupid's bow with a highlighter. We are toning down the volume of the upper lip in order to give more space to the filter. According to the golden ratio rule, the ideal distance between eyes should be one eye width. If you have wide set eyes, you're joining the likes of a slew of beloved beautiful celebrities, such as Jenny Kim, Ta Hyun, and Mina. When it comes to making your eyes appear closer together, the general idea is to use dark colored makeup closer to the middle of your face. You can start by extending your inner brows, making them longer, without quite creating a unibrow. People with wide set eyes sometimes have a nose with a wider bridge as well, which accentuates the distance between the eyes. You can add dimension and slim the look of your nose by putting your contour skills into good use. Use a thin brush to paint a line on either side of your nose. Then, soften the contour lines with a fluffy brush and set with a face powder to avoid it looking harsh and unnatural. Do you know how you apply your eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara can totally transform the look of the distance between your eyes as well? Apply a neutral eyeshadow that's close to your skin color all over your lid. A darker shade is blended at the outer V region. Then, select a medium color and blend it in the inner corner region to deepen its shadow. Inner corner liner is a great method to bring your eyes closer. For those who are not used to filling them in, it's more recommended to use eyeshadow with a flat angle brush to do it. Begin at the inner corner of the lower lash line. By following the direction of your lower lash line, extend a line from it. Then, fill in another line that joins with the upper lash line. Keeping your hair off from the sides of your face helps reduce the impression of wide set eyes. With your hair covering the temple regions and cheekbones, it directs people's attention to the middle of your face. Hence, the impression of wide set eyes will be further emphasized. Having close set eyes is far from a crisis, but for us, the beauty-obsessed beauties, it can sometimes seem like one. We've blended our eyeshadow until our hands are tired, yet something about our look just feels unbalanced. Close set eyes can sometimes throws us off of our A-game, when it comes to making your eyes wider apart, changing the eyebrow shape can alter how you look. Making your eyes appear wider is as easy as widening your brow arch. Extending the tail of your brow with an eyebrow pencil is another trick that will pull your eyes outward. Use different shades of eyeshadow for your eye look. Pop a lighter color in the inner corner and leave the darker colors for the outside. The light shade creates the illusion of a greater distance between your eyes, while a dark outer corner gives you definition. You should apply eyeliner on both your upper and lower lash lines but only halfway, so line from mid-eye to outer corner. The cat eye technique on your upper lash line works wonders in widening eye distance too. Whether you're blessed with natural long lashes, or you're using falses, the outer lashes are our focal point. Place extra mascara toward the outer corner, and just watch as your eyes seemingly expand. If you love how your nose look, you can even skip the nose contour at your nose root. The under eye blush placement adds color to the area around your outer corner. Hence drawing our attention to the end of the eyes. Eyebrows bring balance and proportion to the face and eyes, and they can also lift your entire look if you take the right steps. Closer eyebrow to eyes distance, or the low brows, exudes the fierce cold and masculine charisma. Adjusting the brow shape is the easiest way to achieve that visual harmony. Trim your brows at the lower rim to lift your brows higher. It allows more space between your brows and your eyelids, so your eyes will look less shadow. When filling in the brows, try to shape your inner brows higher. Focus on darkening the color of your brows at the upper edge, but not the lower edge. The inverted eyeshadow technique works magic by creating more space above the eyelids. Go for light eyeshadow shades on the upper lid, and shift the center of visual focus to the lower lid area. By filling an eyeshadow near the waterline at the outer corner, and drawing a yo cell contour. Conversely, Having excessively wide distance between brows and eyes might cause your features to look scattered 
and it takes away that glow from your beauty, as opposed to what was suggested just now. We are going to trim the brow hair at the brow front, so that your brows will be directed to the downward direction. The linear shape brows with soft arch look best on you, as they can minimize the brow to lid space. When filling in the brows, darken the color at the lower rim. The visual weight will then be higher at the lower region of the brow and pulse the visual focus to the lower level. The darker shade eyeshadows are the quickest and most effective way in giving dimension to your bone structure. Blend out the eyeshadow all over the upper lid and extend the shadow to the ridge of your deep crease. Moreover, the long, wispy and curled lashes are the ultimate ticket to turning up your look a few notches. The full and fluffy lashes open up more space around your eyes so that people will be attracted to your eyes more rather than the other parts of your face. If you do not have long or full lashes, falses always come in handy in this situation. Beauty in its physical form often insists on itself in the most impractical way. The golden ratio is just one of many ways to measure aesthetic beauty. Rather than serving as a standard of beauty, the beauty experts and cosmetic surgeons use it as a reference point to educate clients and help them understand how the relationship between facial features contributes to a harmonious appearance. We also need to know that the golden ratio is used to restore balance and proportionality, and it is not a measurement of facial beauty. By understanding this theory, we can better appreciate the science behind beauty. This knowledge allows us to make modifications to the way we look through makeup, exploring more styling options and appearing more pleasing to the human eye. All right, we have finally reached the end of our video today. Comment below and let us know which tip you find the most helpful for you. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Goodbye.